Last time on Delightful Travelers, we discovered the beautiful coastal city of Chefalu. It was hard to leave this place, but sadly, it's time to move on. In this video, we'll be exploring Sicily's second biggest city, Catania. We've heard mixed things about this place, but we're here to find out what it's all about. I'm Anna, and this is Trevor. In this series, we're exploring the south of Italy. Join us on our adventures by hitting subscribe and clicking the like button. An extra thank you to our channel members and patrons for making these videos possible. Now, let's check out the city. I'm on my way now. Welcome to Catania, everyone. We've been here for a few days now, and let us tell you that we are absolutely digging this city. And those of you that have been following along probably know that we were recently in Palermo. We started our Sicilian journey there. So we're kind of naturally gonna be comparing the two cities throughout the course of this video. So Catania is in fact the second biggest city here in Sicily, right after Palermo. The population of the actual city is just over 300,000, but the whole metropolitan area has 1.1 million. Well, look where we're starting things off today. This might be the oldest looking church I've ever seen in my life, but I can assure you it is not. Yeah, this actually dates back from the 60s. So in the scheme of things, it's really not that old. Also, believe it or not, this is not the main cathedral here in Catania. This is a church called the Church of San Lorena. Mi San Nicolo Lorena. All right, so the plan is to go in this thing and see what it's all about, huh? Yeah, but there's an actual purpose that we came here. So people say Catania is famous for being the city that's right on the Ionian Sea, but also right next to the very famous volcano Etna. And apparently from the rooftop here, you can see the view of both. Well, the inside of this church is absolutely beautiful. As you can see, all these old pillars, really amazing paintings on the wall, but we made our way up these stairs, and that's why I'm out of breath, you guys, because we just climbed all the way to the top of this thing for views like this. So as promised, you get amazing views of Catania from up on this church. Also, let's talk about Mount Etna. You cannot miss this when you're up here. This, my friends, is an active volcano and yes it's actually that close to the city here so i'm pretty sure mount etna is actually the most active volcano in all of europe and i could be wrong here but i don't know if we've act ever actually been around an active volcano before we've been around lots of like dormant ones but yeah, i don't know this might be a first for us and i think maybe i'm wrong someone can correct me if i'm wrong is there smoke coming out of there right now i th first thought it was clouds but it seems to be going in an upwards motion, so I think maybe it's smoking right now. So I'm pretty sure this city has been destroyed a few times from that volcano and various earthquakes over hundreds, maybe even thousands of years. So let's hope that does not happen today for us and all of our sake. We've now come over to a Sicilian cafe because we just saw Mount Etna and now we're gonna eat Mount Etna. Look at this little guy. So this is Arancini and what's unique here in the city is they make them a little bit different. Now remember in Palermo we had these and they were like a ball. They were very circular. This is shaped just like Etna. How cool is that? I went for the ragu, which is like the classic. And I think what I'm gonna do is my plan of attack is just to bite the top right off this thing. Here we go. Man, these things are so good. They are the perfect lunch meal for us. Now in this one, there is some beef. You can see kind of like the tomato style sauce. It's basically a ball of rice that's deep fried. Now, the one I had in Palermo had peas in it. I don't believe this one does. I'm trying to compare the two, which one I like better. I just had one bite so far, so I'm gonna have to think on it. I will say though, they're both equally very tasty. Take a look what I got. Mine is actually in the shape of a, a ball. This is a non-classic one, so on the menu here they have a few different classics and then some like originals, I guess they call them. So it's got cornflake crumbs on the outside and there's vegetables, onions, and smoked provolone on the inside. Oh yeah, I love how super crunchy that is on the outside because of the cornflake crumbs. Like you can hear the crunch as you bite into it. And then it's a lot more creamy on the inside. It's actually, I think, caramelized onions. So that's the first taste I get. But you also get a smoky flavor from the, I think it was the provolone. There's also vegetables in here, but I'm not sure what type. Maybe spinach? It looks a little dark. I'm not sure, but it's really delicious. So as good as that arancini was, I still don't think it was quite as good as the ones we had in Palermo in the very first video, our first impressions of Palermo and Sicily, huh? Mine was really good, but I think the ragu is probably like, yeah. the, it's traditional for a reason. <laughs> I've been talking about that first arancina 
for a long time now since we got here, so I'm hoping to find one just as good as that. <laughs> this is what traveling in Italy is all about. We were just walking down the street and we just happened upon these ancient ruins. I think we should probably go inside and check it out. Uh, holy moly, this is absolutely crazy. You would never think this is right in the middle of the city, just off a random sidewalk. Look at this place. Like, how many hundreds of years is this? So to be honest, it's really hard to find any information out about this place online. What I did see was on the map, it has this as listed as a Greek theater. But when I read about it outside, just a little plaque outside, it said it's actually a Roman theater. But also on the map, you see in another location, a Roman theater. So I don't know if there's two separate theaters or if it's just the map is all messed up. So I know one thing we are doing a lot of stairs today. I mean a lot. We already climbed all those stairs at the church in the first of the video. Now we're here walking around this thing on a 30 degree day, huh? Yeah, I'm trying to do some video back here for maybe an Instagram reel. So those of you, those of you that follow us on Instagram know that we do a lot of stories, but we're not so good about posting photos and reels. We need to get better about that. <laughs> trying to do at least a few videos. By the time this comes out, maybe you'll know if we actually succeeded or not. Yeah, and if you want to follow us in real time while we're making our way around Italy, you can follow us on Instagram because we do post stories. We're actually good at that one. It's funny, you can see all these like windows and balconies around here, and I realize people actually live in those places. Can you imagine living in a place and just overlooking like an old ancient Roman theater? <laughs> I know, just like, you know, waking up, having your coffee, Looking staring at this. At this. <laughs> it's pretty neat. Not only is there that big theater, you can just kind of walk around behind it amongst all these ruins. Look at that. It's like all this rubble. Like who knows when that was destroyed. It's just sitting there. You can walk right up to it. This place is really cool. Definitely recommend it if you're in the city here. Well, would you look at that? We found another beautiful square here in Catania. There are a lot of squares here, but this happens to be the main one in the city. We have the Cathedral of Catania behind me. There's also in the center of the square, a fountain with an elephant, which apparently is the symbol of the city. Can't, again, I can't seem to find out a lot about this city. There's not a lot of information online about all the things that are happening here. But why is an elephant a symbol of the city? Someone explain it in the comments below, please. So it's a little later now in the day and we've come over to a more of a local area, which is very beautiful, but it's so quiet here. So let's face it, we've been doing touristic things so far. That's not all we do on the channel. We just had to, you know, get a few of those under our belt while we're in the city here. We did get a beer, but one of the things I wanted to mention about the touristic things is the reason we're trying to counter that right now at a local spot with the beer is we're trying to figure out, one of the goals on the channel is to try to figure out where we might live. Now what I mean by that is we might spend months in a city like this. Do we want to? Do we not want to? That's what we're trying to figure out today, but we can tell you this. This is the kind of stuff we're loving in the city so far. You have the touristic things, but this local stuff, this is it. Back in one of our Palermo videos, we had mentioned that we weren't quite sure what to expect before coming to Sicily, because a lot of people complain that some of the neighborhoods feel gritty and dirty and there's lots of garbage around. And in Palermo, we didn't find that too bad. I mean, there was more garbage than a lot of places, but it wasn't overly dirty. And then we came here and the first thing we noticed when we got off the train was a lot of garbage on the streets. So it sounds like we're about to, I'm about to start on a really bad story, but I'm really not. We're really enjoying the city, to be honest. And it reminded me a little bit of back a few years ago, we went to Vienna, which is a very, very clean city. So I wouldn't so much compare it to Palermo, but let's pretend for a second. And then we went to Budapest right after. And again, the first thing we noticed was all the garbage, especially coming from such a clean city that the contrast was huge. However, we ended up loving Budapest. It's one of our favorite cities ever, despite garbage and graffiti, and it kind of adds to it. Here, we're finding areas that actually, like this, that remind us a lot of Budapest. The place we're at right now is called Barnot. I think I'm pronouncing it right, but take a look at this place. How cute, how quaint is this? It's very bohemian. There's all these like mismatched chairs. If you happen to be wondering, the beer is really good and it's very affordable. I think this was under five euro, which is hard to find for a beer this size while you're in the city, while you're in Italy for that matter. But what we're finding so far in this city is the vibe is entirely different than Palermo. It's very young. It's a very young vibe to this city. And what we really like about it is it, it's not just Italian food. And I know if any Italians are watching, you'd be like, of course, but we've been in some places so far in Italy that it's, it's almost always Italian food. Here, there's everything. We even had Korean food the other night and Mexican food one day and it was top-notch. That's something we're really enjoying about the city so far. 
So we mentioned uh, Korean food earlier, and now we're on the hunt to go back to that place because we figured we won't be able to get that for a while. True. So don't be mad at us. We will definitely be eating <laughs> lots of Italian food. We're actually, after this, going to a smaller town, so we figured it'd be yeah. harder to get any sort of thing that's not Italian. Exactly. So we're gonna do it for one last thing <laughs> of Korean. So the street we're on right now is pedestrian only. You can probably tell that. It is called, I think it's called, it's basically named after Etna, I think it's I Etnia. Know. Etnia, so maybe someone can correct, correct us if we're wrong. So cool. Now, I'm just going to say really quick, we're from a town, a city, I should say, in Nova Scotia called Halifax, and Spring Garden Road, where we're from, <laughs> kind of almost went to pedestrian, then it didn't, and I just wish our city could do that kind of stuff, because look at this. This is awesome, and this street's way bigger than Spring Garden Road, huh? It is, so just to clarify a few things for people that don't know, Spring Garden Road is like the main shopping road, and they tried to shut it down to traffic except for buses, and it, they, I think it lasted like a week. There's one pedestrian-only street in all of Halifax, and it's pretty short. <laughs> yeah, so there you have it. We love our city where we're from, but when we're in bigger cities like this, we realize like change can happen, and look how amazing this is. Everyone's out having such a great time. We're having a great time because we're trying to find some great food. We've been on a few umbrella streets in the world and they actually have a couple in this city. But, I don't know, maybe this is the first time we've been on one with music notes overhead? <laughs> yeah, we've never been on a music note street. Maybe they are starting a trend, huh? They're starting a trend, but I also see like a bunch of ribbons up that way, too. No, no, no. So we made it to the restaurant here. It is called Panda and it is on one of our favorite streets in the entire city, Via Gemalero. We ordered some wine. This is a Sicilian wine. It is a Grillo. It's a dry white wine and we got some delicious food on the way. For the record, we did say earlier we've eaten here before but it was that good. We just had to come back here. So tonight we decided to go for some dumplings which we did not try last time we were here. We ordered two different kinds and the vegan ones came out first. So like I said, they are vegan and I think these ones are fried or pan fried. So they're gonna be crispy. These are very hard to pick up with chopsticks, I will say that. At least metal chopsticks. <laughs> we didn't show you that Ooh, part hot. for a reason. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, those are super hot, but they're really, really yummy. Super crispy and crunchy on the outside. Much like the arancini we had today, except it tastes very, very differently. I can't really tell what veggies they have on the inside, but then you dip it in that soy sauce and oh, it's so good. Next up, we decided to get some pork steamed dumplings. You can see some sesame seeds on here. I don't think there's gonna be many vegetables, but that's fine. I'm gonna take it over this way. I don't know if you guys can see it. Dip it in some of this uh, delicious, it's kind of a soy sauce. They told me it's like a secret sauce. And just try this guy out. The pork is so, so savory in this, full of flavor. The sesame seeds come through as well, and right now, this like, the steam bun itself is just coated in all of that delicious sauce. It's so good, you guys. Mm. I don't know how I can choose a winner between the two, but we got more food coming up. Next up on the list, one we also haven't tried the last time we were here, it's kimchi bukenbop. I might be saying that incorrectly, but it's basically like rice with kimchi and a fried egg on top. Look at that beauty, I'm gonna break it. Oh, wow. That looks good. Yeah. Oh, you guys, after all this Italian food, I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am if I can actually pick it up with my chopsticks. Maybe I should be eating this with a spoon, but I'm gonna attempt this. Got some egg, got some rice, got some kimchi. Again, all stuff we don't normally expect to find when you're in Italy, but I love that we can get this here. Mm. <laughs> I think it's a good one, guys. In case you couldn't tell, that is so good. I don't know if you guys know what kimchi is. If you're not used to Korean food, you might not know, but it's basically fermented cabbage, which sounds kind of gross, but it's so good. Really good for you too, because it is fermented. And the rice and the egg, and there's a little bit of spiciness to it. Ooh, this is delicious. All right, the main event's about to happen here, and you think um, some major like operation is about to go down here, and it is. We're about to eat some chicken wings. Now, any Americans out there or Canadians like us watching, this might seem foreign to wear some gloves, but this is pretty practical. Plus, these are hot. It helps uh, with the heat. And uh, yeah, these look really good. Can you guys see those? Ooh, baby. So these are Korean chicken wings, but they're gochujang chicken wings. And they asked us how spicy we wanted them. And we said, as high as you can possibly go. So we noticed in Italy, like a lot of Italians, I don't think anyway, correct me if I'm wrong, don't really go for spicy food. We do, all you guys that follow us, you know we do. So you can see this sauce, there's some peanuts on here, green onions, and I'm just gonna try it 
with these fancy gloves on here. <laughs> I still can't believe I'm wearing gloves with chicken wings on. I can already picture the comments that are about to happen, but let's just go for it. Mm. Look at that. Oh. I'll tell you guys, after being in Italy now for a few weeks, and eating mainly Italian food and a lot of street food, this is just a pure treat. These wings are just something special, and we've had Korean food around the world in different places, but these are right up there. There's a reason we came back, like I said, I'm so glad we did. If you guys are watching, you're gonna have to come here. I know you're coming here for Italian food, but if you're, you have like a two week vacation or something like that, you're gonna wanna switch it up, come to this place. These little guys are so, so delicious. All right, well we finished up, and now it is time to compare well, Catania versus Palermo. We've been talking about that a lot in the video. What do we prefer? Okay, so I think if maybe if you're just coming on a very short vacation and you want like a super touristy place, Palermo is maybe for you. Yeah. However, for us, it's like, we're as we said, we're looking for places that we could potentially live. It has a great vibe to it, so mm -hmm. Catania totally wins there. Yeah, so the reasons for that is we just prefer the vibe here. It feels younger and we can just picture ourselves living here. Also, I think it's a little more affordable as well. I think so. I haven't really looked into that, but possibly. <laughs> All that kind of helps. And again, when we say live here, we are trying to figure out where we might set up shop throughout the world. And that might mean sometimes, oh, scooter coming? No, no. not coming. Sometimes mm -hmm. we might be living in a place for a month or two or way more like we did in the Dominican Republic. Yeah. Other times not. Yeah, but we're just sort of making a mental checklist of different places we can come back to and stay a while and this is definitely going to be on that list. Yeah, so if you're wondering, yes, we could live in this city for sure, but I don't think we could live in Palermo. Not quite sure. No. I mean, we could, but this I would definitely pick over that. Mm -hmm. So in the next video, as you guys might know, we've tried to sort of do some beach days. It hasn't really worked out. So we're going to a beach town. Fingers crossed we can get some beach days I love days that in. you said tried. Like, it's it's been a fail so far. So we're going to try to do that. We're going to set up shop in a little beach town mm -hmm. close by. Now, if you're new around here, it's Trevor and Anna, Delightful Travelers. Thank you all for watching this far in the video. Click subscribe, leave us a comment. Heck, share the video. Probably means you like it. If you got this far, if you're not new, we love that you guys are watching again. And big shout out to all of our Patreons and our channel members as well. All right, guys, that's it. From Catania, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.